did over in Poplars where international scholars of renown come and uh, do their work and then share with um, their hosts and with a number of different other departments and students and so forth and other campuses, um, their expertise and knowledge. So it's a really quite a wonderful um, institution that we have here. I'm very happy to um, introduce uh, Carmen Popescu, who comes to us from uh, Paris, where she works um, in part for the sort of equivalent for the National Institute for Historic Preservation, where she's done important research on a number of preservation project, projects, including for Saint-Denis, uh, rural uh, village architecture in France. Um, she's teaching currently in Tours, but she's also taught in Rennes and at the Sorbonne. And it's from the Sorbonne that she has her PhD with a prior degree from uh, the Institute of Fine Arts in Bucharest, Romania, which is her homeland. Um, She's published many, many articles, um, primarily on issues of architecture and national identity, uh, national and regional architectures of Romania, which although she began as an art historian, she has made her area of expertise. Uh, she has a number of forthcoming works, one on constructing a nation through architecture, Romania 1881 to 1945, and another on Le Comte de Neuilly and the beginning of architectural restoration in Romania. She's organized many conferences, um, two international conferences most recently in Bucharest on issues of nationalism and regionalism in architecture, which is quite a hot topic for those of you who don't keep up on architectural history issues. Um, and also uh, organized a number of ex exhibitions, including one in Ankara, Turkey, and in Bucharest. She's made many uh, numerous television and radio presentations um, as well, and I'm quite thrilled to have her here this evening to speak to us about uh, Romanian architecture in the 20th century. Carmen? Thank you very much, Michelle, for by introducing me, and uh, thank you, everybody, by especially those who wrote uh, letters for me uh, to come here, because I'm really very grateful to be here at the Institute for Advanced Study. And I think it's a wonderful uh, opportunity to, to make the connections in between art history and cultural history, which is also a, a field that interests me a lot. So uh, I'll try uh, to present you something that might uh, appear quite uh, uh, dry at the very beginning, identity or identification. So I have uh, chosen a study of case, uh, of case story, which is the Romanian uh, architecture in order to, to make it smoother, this uh, presentation. So identity or identification building images in Romanian architecture. The concept of identity became in the last years a commonplace of architectural history. Thus, it is not my intention to prove the relationship between architecture and identity, but to analyze it. So my talk of today will focus on the mechanics of identification and on, and on its spectival substance. My approach is based on two fundamental notions, identification and particularity, that I will discuss in the framework of the dialogue architecture identity. In this dialogue, architecture has a double function. It acts both as a vehicle and instrument of identity. It can be seen as both a creator of identity, while it is also, in the meantime, a simple conveyor of it. My analyze will address the question of uh, collective identity. I will thus deal with identitarian images of communities, trying to see how these communities build up an architectural image of themselves and what are the avatars of these images. This will allow observing uh, what induces a collective identitarian image, what is the role of the individual as part of the community and that of the power as representative of it. 
I will discuss these matters in the context of nationalist ideology, considering it as a primary source of the need of identity. As Benedict Anderson put it, a nation is an imagined political community. By its very nature, it needs to construct its own identity. Architecture will be one of the most efficient and powerful means to do it. Before entering into the study of case that I have chosen, I would like to quickly review what enhanced the need of identity. It was the perspective of history that brought this need up. At the origin of modern thinking, catalyzed by the Hegelian theories, the historical perspective induced a major crisis defined by Hannah Arendt as a loss of tradition. National construction can be seen as the response to this crisis, as a need of redefining the world in terms of self-consciousness. History serves nations to uh, define themselves, to build up their identity. The construction of this identity, it's a highly symbolical act using a series of elements considered themselves as highly symbolical, such as language, folklore, historical monuments, etc. Among them, architecture occupies an important place. If history shapes the general substance of a nation, the binomial culture power originates the process of identitarian construction. During 19th century, as well as all along the next century, nationalism is defined through the tension developed by this binomial in search for a congruent dialogue between culture and politics. Throughout this evolution, the ideology originating nationalism suffers a changing of positions, thus reflecting its adaptation to new contexts and demands. Once defined, the, ide ide the identitarian concept declines itself through techniques of identification. This leads to the mentioned transformation in the uh, argumentative substance of the nationalist ideology. Due to the aspectival character of the identitarian concept, its images bear a disconcerting multiplicity of appearance. Identitarian architectural <coughs> expressions follow the same rule. Architecture was used as a privileged expression of the uh, collective identity. The choice is to be explained by the forceful uh, represent, uh, representativeness of architecture, not only architecture is the public art by definition, but it is also entrusted with a strong moral value. More than that, its uh, suggestiveness can be used as a coercing instrument by the installed power. Architecture became involved with history since the beginning of 19th century, if not earlier. I will not develop here uh, its interest, if not obsession with time and temporality, which was already broadly studied. On the one hand, the increasing awareness of history, and on the other hand, the preoccupation with a scientific perspective, responsible uh, for a taxonomical position, inevitably led to the general sense that historical narrative formed the basis for architectural design. This historical narrative is to be perceived as a confluence between the need of identity uh, at the political <coughs> level and the search for an inner order of the evolution in architectural thinking of the beginning of 19th century. In order to analyze the inner mechanism of the identitarian construction, I have chosen Romanian architecture as a study of case. This case offers the advantage of an exceptional application of the identitarian topic both in terms of duration and of variety of responses. I do not have the intention to present you a history of the identitarian architecture in Romania. My aim is to demonstrate what is the relationship between identity and architecture. Who uses who? I will also address the question of the dynamics between identity and identification, understanding the first as a statement and the second as a volative act. Thus, I will not review the national style in the Romanian architecture, but use examples of it as arguments of my approach. During the second half of 19th century, Romania is deeply engaged in a process of state construction. Can I have the first two slides, please? Oops. 
questions? Oh, I, I can see very well. Yeah. For me, it's fine. I can't see you, but I, I see my paper, so this is the most important. <laughs> So you have uh, uh, one general map with the Balkans for uh, those of you who uh, don't know this region. And this is a map actually uh, at about the First World War with the uh, historical uh, divisions by that time. And uh, this is, uh, oops. This is a, uh, an older map of uh, the three provinces of uh, what uh, become uh, after that Romania, uh, with Wallachia in uh, the southern part, Moldavia on the eastern, and Transylvania, which was part of uh, <coughs> Hungarian kingdom and then of the Austro-Hungarian Empire on the central west part. So during the second half of 19th century, Romania is deeply engaged in a process of state construction. This process started in 1859 with the union of the former principalities of Wallachia and Moldavia and was reinforced in 1877-78 by the independence war uh, against the Ottoman Empire. The state construction generated a certain need of identity which on the political level was expressed as a national affirma affirmation. During its advancement, Romanian nationalism presents several forms of expression molded by the evolution of both its uh, objectives and that of the political macro context. Thus, the, ideolo uh, the ideological support of Romanian nationalism was subject of fluctuations and readjustments. However, its intimate substance was not affected and kept its well-defined <laughs> nationalist compound during the tribulations of the successive political regimes always serving as a decisive argument of the Romanian state. The identitarian construction of Romania generated several architectural expressions. I will focus my talk on the most achieved of these all, the national style. Stimulated by the national aspirations at the end of 19th century, its evolution perfectly superposes on that of the Romanian kingdom, 1881-1947, becoming its identitarian emblem. Its designation, Romanian style or national style, testifies for its ideological charge. But, but this national style will not be the only uh, identitarian architecture engendered by the nationalist ideology in Romania. The socialist state and after it, the democratic one established after the events of December 1989, uh, both seek to build their own architectural images. I argue that all these three cases of identitarian architectures represent pure constructed images. Due to this, their character is doctrinal and as a natural consequence, easily contestable. Romanian national style was born under the pressure, uh, under the pressure of history. Starting with the beginning of 19th century, Romanian principalities sought for a political and cultural emancipation, turning away from what was commonly designated by the intelligentsia as, I uh, quote, oriental barbarism. In their quest of uh, emancipation, they turned towards Western European models that they considered as both an accomplished source of civilization and a pot uh, po potential political support. Thus, they broke the continuity of tradition. Emulation, which sometimes appeared to be a forced adoption of the Western models, engendered a <coughs> paradox. The more the Romanians progressed on their way towards modernization, the more they felt the need to define themselves, especially that the uh, European context promoted the concept of nation as the perfect axiological measure of modern world. Hence, the creation of modern uh, Romania required a representative culture. The government and the intelligentsia consensually worked to fabricate it. History was its nourishing substance. The past became uh, object of a scientific study for the scholars and offered main inspira inspiration for painters and writers. 
Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, uh, here you have uh, two uh, slides of the of two paintings of that period. They are on purpose on black and white because I uh, uh, took the uh, photos from uh, uh, magazines published, from art magazines published in that period in order to show you that it was a, a big concern. And this is uh, uh, one of uh, the major uh, figure of Romanian history, uh, Michael the Brave. Uh, seeing the, the head of uh, the uh, Bathory Prince, the Hungarian one. And here is uh, another major figure. This one he, uh, is a Moldavian guy, uh, Stefan Celmare, Stephen the Great, and the Polish troops. A new Romania was waking up. The next slide, please. And knew she was in each of its manifestation. This uh, this is the title of this uh, uh, painting, The Awakening of uh, Romania by Tatarescu. So, uh, a new Romania was waking up and knew she was in each of its manifestation, her very name being a recent creation. Her culture, too, was new, even if it was intended to be rooted in the local tradition. The topics were national, indeed, but the language emulated the Western European fashionable artistic trends in order to show its emancipation and modernity. If uh, the Art de Salon exalted national history, that was not the case of architecture due to its nature of uh, represent uh, representativeness. On the contrary, architecture continued to develop the Western trends that have invaded the two principalities at the beginning of 19th century, thus breaking the thread of tradition. Actually, the authority of the young state represented itself uh, a definitive fracture of the uh, traditional perspective. Therefore, the state didn't seek to represent itself through an image of the local history, but through an image already prestigious. The kingdom proclaimed in 1881 chose the Beaux-Arts architecture to reflect its splendor through the new institutions. Can I have the next slides, please? So here is in Bucharest the Romanian Athenaeum by a French architect, Albert Galeron, and this is uh, uh, the uh, <coughs> Economy Savings uh, Bank, uh, also in Bucharest by a French architect, Paul Gautreau. The next slide, please. Here is uh, the same Paul Gautreau, the Carol I Foundation, also in Bucharest, and this is the central uh, post office in Bucharest by a Romanian architect this time trained in uh, Beaux-Arts uh, uh, architecture section in Paris. His name is Alexandru Savulescu. So this was the first identitarian image adopted by the young state. However, the official adoption did not suffice to promote, uh, to promote it as a national image. For progressive intelligentsia, such an image could have been found only on the, in the continuation of the tradition, which was in particular broken by the import of Western trends. They aspired thus to oppose to this borrowed language a local one, based on the specificity of the tradition. They had still to realize how to define this tradition that conveyed their identity. Since superior education was scarcely developed at that time in the country, young Romanians went to study in the high places of the Western European culture. This period of formation was for them also a good opportunity to get in contact with the techniques of identitarian construction, techniques greatly experimented in this cultural pose. <clears throat> young Romanian students, otherwise said the future intelligentsia of the country, architects included, got familiarized to the evocative power of history and to the formative matrix of folk art. These were to be the two crucial elements used to define tradition. History legitimated the nation, while generic people embodied its very substance. The first acknowledged, uh, the first acknowledged example of the Romanian national style was the Lahovari Villa, designed in 1886 by Ion Mincu for the future uh, general Jacob Lahovari in Bucharest. Can I have this next slide, please? By that time, Minku had just finished his studies at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris and was, 
His friend and, bio uh, and biographer was formal about that, dreaming to create a new Romanian architecture. La Hovari, a salient character of the uh, political scene of the time, he was one of the uh, representative figures of the Conservative Party, gave Mincu this possibility, believing himself in the continuity of the tradition. Let me open a short uh, parenthesis here. The position of the Conservative Party strongly contributed to the development of the national style. In spite of its wanted modesty, La Hovari's house made sensation in the intellectual circles of the time since it was the first to uh, epitomize their aspirations towards a new art able to spin again the thread of tradition. Indeed, Minku had overtly inspired himself of several examples of local artistic heritage, searching arguments for this new architecture in historical buildings, in the sense of high culture, as well as in folk art. Can I have the next slides, please? So uh, here you have a parallel between the Lahovari villa and one of the uh, very common peasant houses uh, from uh, the uh, uh, Carpathians uh, area in uh, central uh, Romania, central East Romania. <coughs> and the next uh, slides, please. Uh, and uh, here are uh, one example of a Lakian art uh, from 18th century who was declared the major source of uh, inspiration. This is the uh, porch of the uh, Stavropolos church in Bucharest. And here is, is an example. Uh, can you try to focus it, maybe, a little bit? Oh, here it is. Thank you very much. So here is a Moldavian church from uh, uh, the period of uh, Stefan cel Mare, uh, Stephen the Great, as I told you, considered one of the greatest period, if not the greatest period, of Moldavian uh, architecture. And you can see this Gothic. Uh, uh, influence which is very pregnant, uh, which is very uh, specific <coughs> for the uh, Moldavian um, architecture and also the uh, ceramic, uh, varnished ceramics around the windows and maybe you have already observed that in the Lahovari uh, villa. We should bear in mind that history of art was by that time a barely emerging discipline. Scholars had just begun to study ancient churches and other civil buildings around the country. The operation founded by the state started in 1860. This was the time when the notion of historical monument emerged with, uh, with its apparent problems, restoration and protection. But it was also the time when the same scholars decided what tradition was made of. Tradition was built up following a pre-existent uh, pre uh, given image they wanted to give of the Romanian nation. History occupied the place of honor, while folk or peasant art was used mainly as a picturesque catalyst. For the universal exposition in 1867 in Paris, the commissary of the Romanian section, the historian Alexandru Dobescu, had proposed to raise a specific peasant farm on Champ de Mars. Eventually, the pavilion designed by the French architect Ambroise Baudry under Odobescu's direct advices, was inspired solely by old religious architecture, especially by two churches, Curtea de Argeș um, and Stavropolos in Bucharest. Can I have the next two slides, please? So here are the pavilions designed by the French uh, Ambroise Baudry in, uh, uh, for the exposition in 1867, uh, which I have to tell you was the first time when Romania uh, participated as uh, a nation and not as a part of the uh, Turkish Empire, of the Ottoman Empire. So it was really very important to show what was this uh, Romanian specificity. And uh, this is uh, the pavilion, one of the pavilion, I mean, one of the structures inside the pavilion in the uh, Galerie de Machine. Uh, and you will see that this was completely inspired by Curta de Arges Church, uh, which was a bishop uh, place. And uh, this was the pavilion on Champ de Mars, inspired <laughs> both by Curta de Arges. Please retain this image of uh, uh, 
little towers and pretend that this is completely uh, an error made by the, the French architect. And uh, the, the, the down part structure, uh, structure of the pavilion was inspired by uh, Stavropoulos. Can I have the next images? So here is Curta de Argeș. You have here an image. And just uh, remark that the towers are spinning the other way around, which is more correct because it doesn't uh, split the oral architectural composition. And this is um, an old image also uh, taken from uh, an art magazine of the end of 19th century of Stavropoulos Church I have shown you before. And this was, I, I, I have chosen this image because it was Stavropoulos Church before its restoration in the beginning of 20th century. So it just gives you an image of what it was by that time. So you can observe the arcades and the painted exterior and everything that Baudry uh, took and used in his pavilion, of course, under uh, the very direct uh, guidance of uh, the Romanian historian Alexandru Odobescu. Um, <laughs> so uh, these two churches, Curta de Argeș and Stavropolos, were judged as paramount masterpieces of Romanian art. The Curta de Argeș Church, the first historical monument to be restored in Romania, actually the restoration just began when the exposition took place, was to become the very emblem of Romanian historical tradition, serving as uh, the most achieved model for the creators, sorry, for the creators of the future natu uh, national style. History was invoked as an argument of uh, legitimacy. It served to dissipate the fear of a lack of history to be understood as big history. At the end of 19th century, it was common among Romanian intellectuals to doubt uh, about the very existence of a local art. There were articles published in artistic magazines proclaiming that Romanians haven't succeeded to produce a personal artistic expression in the past. Lamentations used to, uh, you, uh, to urge the creation of such a specific expression in the present. The fear that the country lacked a dignified artistic past was in fact responsible for the choice of the Beaux-Arts architecture as an official style. This was the situ uh, situation that, this, sorry, this was a situation that couldn't last in a state founded on a nationalist ideology. Soon, authorities joined private initiatives in their efforts to create a new Romanian architecture. Their interest in the new style marked the beginning of a different approach towards tradition. Hence, public comments were seen as laboratories for uh, uh, determining the, the vocabulary of the national style. The, progr uh, the programs often, uh, often defined by, um, the elements to be considered as significant in the construction of a concerted image of the new architecture. The context for a new city hall in Bucharest was of chief importance for the establishing of an identitarian architectural image. Last great project of the gigantic building campaign engaged after the proclaiming of the kingdom, Bucharest City Hall was the only one to adopt the national style, act that represented the first major, uh, major official acknowledgement of the nascent current. The mayor of the city gave, in the program of the contest published in 1894, uh, a clear description, uh, description sorry, of what he understood by Romanian style, and I quote, the architect should use uh, judicious, uh, judiciously and extensively the characteristic elements of the several periods of the Romanian architecture, such as arcades, galleries, columns, porches, and balconies made out of wood or stone, belfries, ornamented friezes and balustrades, polychrome ornaments in brick and terracotta, etc. End of the quotation. He was stressing the importance of the genuine source of inspiration, asking the architects to study, I quote again, monuments and old buildings of the country, and to produce a concrete proof of documentation. What were the images of the Romanian style invented by the contestants? For George, uh, for George Sterian, can I have the next two slides, please? 
So here you have uh, the projects for a city hall uh, by George Sterian, an architect practicing mainly in the restoration field. History was the central argument of his approach. He juxtaposed quotations from the old churches that he had already studied and that he estimated as most evocative for a national uh, synthesis. The Italian Giulio Magni, uh, just a second, uh, can, can I turn back? I wanted to, to show you again some elements directly inspired <coughs> by the Curta d'Argeș. Uh, let me see. Uh, you can see all the cornage uh, actually is inspired by Curta d'Argeș and uh, no, you can see here because in, inside it's a very Beaux-Arts scheme actually. Can I, can I pass to the... Um, so the Italian Giulio Magni preferred an interpretation of certain artistic periods, especially the 18th century in Wallachia, adding a touch of, allegor uh, of allegoric discourse. He used the emblematic figure of the Prince Mihai the Brave, you remember him from the painting in the beginning, who's over there and who's very Italianate actually, very uh, neoclassical in a way, very uh, impressive, considered as the pre uh, precursor at uh, um, 60,000 of the national unity. The same symbolic image was to serve the project designed by Yon Minku, Yon Minku, the one with La Hovari in the beginning, if you remember. So this is Yon Minku project in uh, uh, 1900 uh, of um, the city hall. And there, the little uh, sculpture is actually the same uh, Michael the Brave over there on, on the horse. This was the emblematic way to represent him. Uh, riding the horse. Uh, so, um, so the same symbolic image was to serve the project designed by Yon Minku in 1900 for the city hall. The image functioned as an, uh, as an epitome of the quest of a synthetic perspective of tradition. Yet, in spite of the several examples built until the turn of the new century and the efforts to define architectural tradition, national style didn't have an established doctrine uh, by 1900. This led to a multiplicity of expressions reflecting the personal credos of the adepts of this identitarian architecture. There was the quest for a national synth uh, synthesis of Yon Minku. Can I have the next slide? So uh, here you have uh, uh, two different projects by Yon Minku. This is uh, uh, what he intended to project as the Romanian restaurant for the uh, Universal Exposition in Paris in 89 and finally was built only in uh, Bucharest in uh, uh, 92 and it is known as uh, Le Buffet under this French uh, uh, designation. And this is the, the central patio of the Central uh, School for Girls in Bucharest, 91. Can I have the next? Uh, it was also the exotic touch of an oriental heritage as developed by Ion Sokolescu. And here you have two different examples by this architect. Uh, his personal, one of his personal uh, houses in Bucharest on Carol Boulevard and uh, a private uh, command in Bucharest too on uh, Slanik Street. Or it was the innovative interpretation of the folk architectural technique of the French André Emile Le Con du Nuit. Uh, this French guy actually was the first uh, uh, architect to, to restore a historical monument in <coughs> Romania, and this monument, of course, was Curta d'Argeș. And here you have the uh, bishop's palace at Curta d'Argeș. Here uh, is the apartment of the bishop, and here uh, are the uh, offices of the domestics, so you can see two ways of uh, interpreting uh, tradition in a very Art Nouveau style and in a more vernacular regionalist way. What may seem a disconcerting diversity was actually unified by a common mechanics of identification. All these disparate examples share this mechanics based on the one hand 
on a vocabulary using local history and juxtaposing regions and periods, and on the other hand, on a unifying scheme which was that of the Beaux-Arts. Historicism brought the moral legitimacy that, uh, that ident identitarian images demand for. The various eclecticism responded to a need of a synthetic approach trying to answer the crucial question, what is a nation? But they also represented a technique of creating pictures compositions, key element in the aesthetics of the time. The Beaux-Arts language, thanks to its universality, granted credibility and legibility to this architectural experience, which otherwise might have been considered as a local curiosity. If there was a certain taste at the turn of the century for exoticism and local curiosities encouraged by the universal expositions, there was also a clear need to transcend localism into universality, into universality, sorry. The search for a national expression in Romanian architecture is part of a vast phenomenon formed uh, of uh, similar quests developed everywhere on national or uh, regional scales. Inside the fin du siècle eclecticism, all these experiences should be considered as particularities of this unifying architectural trend, which might be seen as an international uh, style avant la lettre. The multifaceted image of the Romanian national style in its first stage was also due to the fact that nationalist ideology itself was by that time a work in progress. There was more a patriotic attitude than a nationalist doctrine that animated the, created, uh, the creators and the patrons of the new current. Producing a Romanian art was a duty commanded by the ultimate finality of art morality and not by a political statement. The step towards a precise nationalist approach was made by the General National Exposition, open in 1906 in Bucharest. Its overclaim to unite the Romanians from all the provinces articulated for the first time a nationalist political program. In this context, the architecture of the pavilions was a manifesto of the identitarian image, establishing a clear definition of the local tradition. High culture was the main inspiration source of the pavilions. 18th century Wallachian art was declared the most accomplished artistic period with a preference for the religious architecture considered uh, more elaborated. Can I have the next slide, please? I hope it, it will work. This is uh, one of the uh, paramount examples uh, of this Brankovan art which uh, developed at the end of 17th century, beginning of seven of 18th century, sorry, in Wallachia, the uh, monastery of Hures, and you can see the rhythm of arcades. You are going to see it again and again and again in the slides I'm going to <coughs> show you after this. And the next, please. Uh, they were supposed to, to go together, but these are old slides, and they have very uh, thick frames, so I'm sorry that you cannot compare them. This is also uh, Hures, but this is uh, an annex uh, from, uh, uh, 1745, if my me memory is good, and this became uh, an uttermost piece of uh, inspiration uh, for the uh, adepts of national style. This is known as Foishorul Dionysia, uh, the porch of uh, Dionysia, who was the monk that uh, designed it. And you are going to see this, that again. Could I have the next slide, please? And this is uh, um, uh, the palace of Mogoshwaya in um, the neighborhood of Bucharest. The sub this is a suburb of Bucharest, which was uh, commissioned actually by Constantin Brankovanu, who gave the name of this style, the Brankovan style. This is the very, very beginning of uh, 18th century, six, uh, 1702. And this was the royal pavilion at the uh, National General Exposition in 1906. So you can see how much this was inspired by this and what I have shown you before. Uh, we're also favored uh, the 15th century Moldavian art with its Gothic elements and the varnished ceramics. You remember uh, the slide uh, promoted already by Ion Minku and vernacular architecture represented by the Kule and here you have the Kula from the exhibition. 
I don't know if you are uh, familiarized with this term. Kule uh, means uh, uh, tower in Turkish, and it was a fortified uh, residence for the Boya of the time. And that was inspired by a real Kula in Wallachia, this one in the exposition, I mean. So um, it was also favored the vernacular architecture represented by the Kule as well as peasant architecture. This last one, I mean the peasant architecture, treated in an operetta-like version, was relegated to uh, leisure pavilions uh, covering the restaurants of the exposition. And here you have two restaurants, the Moldavian one and the Wallachian one, if I'm right. Oh, yeah, I'm right. So, national style was thus consecrated on the public scene. Can I have the next, please? And here is uh, the Geological Institute. Uh, it's, well, it's the left, it's on the right, and well, never mind. Uh, the, the Geological Institute that was designed by um, Victor Stefanescu, who's, who was one of uh, the two architects of the General National Exposition in Bucharest, and that was designed the very year of the exposition in Bucharest. And this is a project, a new, another project for the city hall in Bucharest by Petra Antonescu, who was one of the major uh, figures of national style in the mature phase. But its real consecration, the consecration of national style, came with the founding after the First World War of Greater Romania, including Transylvania and Bessarabia. Since Greater Romania represented the achievement of the national aspiration of 19th century, national style became logically the official architecture. Here you have the School of Architecture in Bucharest by Grigore Cerkes and the National Art Museum, today the Museum of the Romanian Peasant in Bucharest by Nicolae Ghica Budest. In the annexed provinces, um, part, uh, particularly in Transylvania where the Hungarian past was much too present, national style gained a doctrinal position. Its vocabulary was used as a means of nationalizing the ensemble of the territory. Besides, the, besides public institutions, huge churches constituted a symptomatic identitarian image promoting orthodox belief as a crucial pole of the Romanian national identity. Designated as cathedrals, which often is a false denomination related only to the monumentalized dimensions of the edifice, can I have? These churches, Cluj and Mediash, uh, represented a symbol of Romanianness. However, in spite of its strong doctrinal approach, national style was not perceived as being imposed due to its considerable po po popularity. There was a large public that recognized itself in this architecture. And here you have two examples of, let's say, uh, ordinary architecture, which is not ordinary at all. This is actually private architecture. <coughs> here is Tatia Ciortani in Bucharest, and this is a project by uh, Paul Smarandescu in Galatz. So um, there was a large public that recognized itself in this architecture, which was both patriotic and picturesque. So it was an architecture that served as well uh, the identity of the nation as the ident identification of its individuals. But in this very period of incontestable success, national style was confronted with a denial of its identitarian appropriateness. On the one hand, its position was strongly shaken by the entry of modernism on the Romanian architectural uh, scene. Interwar Romania intelligentsia was dynamic and needed new references, uh, synonymous of the progress of the time. Can I have two next, please? Uh, here are two images uh, of, the, uh, of Bucharest in that period, I mean in the interwar period uh, in the 30s. Here is uh, Magheru uh, Boulevard, which was sort of a showcase for modernism in uh, Romanian interwar period. And this is uh, the palace of uh, uh, telephones, actually built by a, a Romanian architect with uh, uh, an American company. It was an uh, effervescent society that needed to redefine itself. If history still represented the foundation of the nation, 
it did not just uh, justify anymore its image. The concept of identity was now understood in terms of essence of the nation, so it focused on people, the sum of individuals, as the composing element. This change of positions followed the general evolution of the nationalist ideology. The theory of nation replaced the historical perspective, opening two paths for nationalist development. On the one hand, geography was emphasized, revealing the rich variety of regions. regions sorry. On the other hand, history took vengeance with the extremist ideology of total, uh, totalitarian regimes. This double context functioned also in Romania, originating a fracture between the identity of representation in the sense of public image and personal I identification. National style under different appearances served the two images. On the private level, modernity and, const uh, and context prevailed. Modernity represented the uh, hygiene and uh, inner dynamics of the new life. Context, in the sense of the uh, envi uh, environmental, uh, uh, mm, uh, environmental place of the construction, I made it, represented a more focused perception of the, con uh, of the concept of belonging. This attitude replaced regionalism, which in Romania did not respond to a particular ideology. In spite of a folk art with, uh, with well-defined specificities in each region, architects didn't feel attracted to excel these particularities, being interested in a sort of localism. Thus, their architecture was more <coughs> connected with the spirit of the place, genius loci, than with a straight regionalist approach. Can I have the bar? It is not my intention to insist on the two periods of the Romanian recent history. Evoking them here only helped me to add more sense to the mechanics of identification in general and to its use by the national style in particular. Let me conclude with the political theorist James Tully. I quote, every culture is continuously contested, imagined and reimagined, transformed, negotiated. Identity and uh, consequently the signification of every culture is a spectacle, end of the quotation. Identification, fruit of a multiple appropriation, transgresses what seems to be a unique reality. There is no an immutable identity, but through identification, architecture creates the illusion of it. Thank you very much. <laughs>